This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. At new at 11, RTV6 is getting answers from a frustrated mother whose car disappeared after a night out in downtown Indianapolis. She reached out to us through the IndyChannel.com after her car was towed from what she thought was a legal spot. RTV6 reporter Cameron Riddle is getting to the bottom of an issue that's frustrating for many drivers who spend time in downtown Indy. When Amy Guzman parked her car downtown Saturday night at 930, she expected it to be there when she got back. But after spending a few hours in the bars on South Meridian Street, she walked out and realized her car was gone. So I went over and there was like a line of police cars. I went and asked three different ones. None of them would admit who did it. But they all said it was a police and then they told me where to go to get my car. Guzman found out her car was towed and ticketed by IMPD. The ticket written at 1115 led to a $20 fine and a $150 fee to get her car back from the towing company. Guzman says she was legally parked, but her ticket tells a different story. The police officer here said maybe it was a place that we weren't supposed to park, even though the actual meter says and the, everything on that street says it's fine to park. But then I got a citation on my car that said I wasn't parking in an actual spot. Guzman says on Saturday night she pulled her car up right here behind these two cars. And while three cars can physically fit in this area, the city says it's only metered for two. So mine would have been the black. In the time we met with Guzman Thursday evening, another car parked in the very same spot. There's no sign. There, I don't even know if there's any law on the books that says, you know, you cannot park if, you know, more than one car fits in a, in a space. I mean, if they want a ticket for that, I could see, but like to tow you, I don't, I don't think that's legal as far as I'm concerned. Guzman is a single mom and in school and doesn't have room in her budget to pay for parking tickets. She's hoping the city does something to make the rules for parking on South Meridian a bit more clear or at least as clear as the fine print on her parking ticket. Like in broader floor places, you know, there's signs that are very clear about where you can park, where you can't park, what situations or places can you be towed. So they need to make it clear either by through the laws or through signage or something. Working for you in Indianapolis, Cameron Riddle, RTV6. Well, Guzman says she plans to fight this ticket and is hoping she will get a refund for the towing fee. After seeing the problem firsthand, we're following up with the city to learn more about the process for adding signage so drivers know where not to park. If you have a problem and need help getting action or answers, contact us at working for you at rtv6.com. Now to a live look at traffic across central Indiana. You can see wet roads and raindrops on the camera. Well, that be will that be the case when you leave for work or school? Kevin joins us now with your forecast. Kevin. It's been a cold rain this evening, Amanda, and will be in the morning as well. Winds out of the east at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Temperature will not change much between now and the morning. Had a little break in spots here in the last hour, but more light rain will continue to lift into central Indiana from the south. And that's why first thing in the morning, here's our computer projections of 7 a.m. Scattered showers, most numerous eastern half of the state but then continues to lift to the north through the morning hours. But it will be all rain as uh, our rain chances won't diminish until later in the day tomorrow. We'll talk about when temperatures diminish and what that means for a little snow coming up. RTV6 followed the decline of a problem apartment complex on the northeast side of Indianapolis for years. Crews finally demolished the vacant Oak Tree Apartments near 42nd and Post Road in October. The buildings have been the site of murders, vandalism, arson fires and other crimes. Now the community is looking forward to a brighter future for that property. Capital City Church of Christ hosted a town hall meeting tonight. Neighbors and advocates talked about new ways to use the land. Darius Ross, the founder of a nonprofit group focused on improving the Far East Side, is calling on the community to take part in the discussion. It is important that the community show up. Mm -hmm. and, and voice their concerns and what they want to see be placed in their community Absolutely. because if we're not at the table they will eventually make those decisions for us according to a list handed out at the meeting some of the things people do not want to see built on the property are liquor stores tobacco stores or another apartment complex the next town hall meeting is set for february 25th from six to eight at the warren township library branch
First responders from several agencies helped free two workers from a trench in Hamilton County tonight. Officials say the men got stuck from the waist down at a site on Maple Street in Arcadia. Pictures from the Noblesville Fire Department give a sense of how many people took part in this rescue operation. The Jackson Township Fire Chief says one victim was flown to Methodist Hospital. It is unclear if the other victim needs treatment. A new IMPD program that connects cameras with investigators is paying off. The department announced B-Link late last year. Companies that sign up allow additional equipment to be installed on their surveillance systems, giving officers direct and instant access to footage. A recent case is benefiting from the program. Someone robbed the church's chicken at Washington and Post. Police say cameras at Big Red Liquors, a B-Link partner captured the suspect in their vehicle. Before we would have to come back to uh, the businesses that uh, are long here and ask them for that video. Uh, sometimes that can take up to three to two weeks depending on the complexity of the system and whether the employees have access. IMPD is working to raise awareness about the program. So far, four businesses have signed up. Covering the State House now, a bill that could impact people arrested for marijuana related offenses in Marion County is set for a vote on Monday. Last year, Marion County Prosecutor Ryan Mears announced his office will no longer prosecute simple marijuana possession charges. Senate Bill 436 would give the state's attorney general the ability to prosecute some crimes if the county prosecutor declined. Mears released a statement to RTV6 saying, quote, the real issue is marijuana and the disproportionate impact our current marijuana policies have on people of color. This is a thinly veiled effort to avoid that discussion, end quote. And supporters of workplace rights for women spoke in support of a few bills today. One would prohibit an employer from using an applicant's wage history in the hiring process. This bill will help ensure that employer, employees are paid based on factors like their experience, their skills, and the responsibilities they are assuming instead of their salary history. Other bills discussed include one that would give pregnant women more accommodations at work and one that would establish a paid family and medical leave program in the state. Democrats have one more day to make their case in the Senate impeachment trial of President Trump. Today, House managers focused on the making the constitutional argument to remove the president from office. ABC's Rachel Scott has the latest from Capitol Hill. Democrats laying out their roadmap, insisting the president violated the Constitution. No president has ever used his office to compel a foreign nation to help him cheat in our elections. Prior presidents would be shocked to the core by such conduct. At the heart of today's argument, the central question of abuse of power. President Trump's improper withholding of military assistance was clearly done to pressure Ukraine to announce the two baseless investigations, a gross abuse of power. Hour after hour, the House impeachment managers weaving together their evidence, even using words from one of the president's key allies in the case against him, playing this video of Senator Lindsey Graham from the Clinton impeachment trial. Doesn't even have to be a crime. It's just when you start using your office and you're acting in a way that hurts people, you've committed a high crime. The clip striking back against a core argument from the president's legal defense team that abuse of power is not a crime and in turn is not an impeachable offense. The actions of the president do not reach that level, no matter which school of thought you're on. The president's lawyers ready for a counterpunch are expected to begin their case on Saturday. Both sides facing the same challenge, keeping the attention of all 100 senators who have had to sit silently for hours. Today, some Republicans using fidget spinners and stress balls to stay occupied, others even sketching. Democrats have one more day to make their case and they will have to do so for now without testimony from key witnesses. That issue was punted until after opening statements and could hinge on a handful of moderate GOP senators who would have to vote across the aisle. Rachel Scott, ABC News, Capitol Hill. And investigators say autopsy results confirm an Eastside Indianapolis woman's death was connected to a fire in her home. Firefighters say grease on the stove caught fire and spread to oxygen canisters, causing them to explode. It happened yesterday morning in the home on Kildare Avenue near 21st and Emerson. IFD says it is working to increase awareness about this kind of danger. The victim is identified as 65-year-old Gloria Lawson.
And the search for a driver continues in the investigation into a deadly hit and run in Hendricks County. The sheriff's office says someone hit and killed 20-year-old Emmanuel Charles Walker at around 6.30 this morning on County Road 100 South near Avon. Investigators are looking for a silver-colored Saturn with front and passenger side damage. It may also be missing a mirror on the passenger side. You can report information by calling 317-745-9354. Tomorrow is the last day for a major store at Washington Square Mall. Burlington is closing. The company released a statement to RTV6 earlier this month saying associates were aware of the situation. This comes just weeks after another anchor store at the mall, Dick's Sporting Goods, closed. Another major university in the Hoosier State is no longer requiring SAT or ACT scores as part of the application process. Why one test prep professional does not think the change will have much of an impact on students. We'll be right back. Dream Mattress Studio at Value City Furniture. This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. For decades, high school students applying for colleges have studied, prepared, and registered for standardized tests like the SAT or ACT. But as those tests face more scrutiny, a major Indiana school is making those test scores optional. The IU system announced this week students can decide whether to include their test scores on their applications. Ball State did the same last fall. Tonight's RTV6's Cornelius Hawker shows you why colleges are going this route and why it's likely the tests will not be going away. Libraries are full of knowledge, so it's fitting. Steve Moxie holds SAT and ACT test prep here. So if you remember here, anytime you see capacity... Steve's been doing this work since 2011. Capacity. He's worked with lots of students with their future uh, yeah. in mind. So I do think that if the instruction you're doing is solid for how to read and think more clearly, um, that a prep course, if done well, can lead to skills that can lead to further academic success. Almost every school in the IU college system, besides IU East and Southeast, has decided to go to a test optional admissions policy beginning in the fall of 2021. All the colleges agreeing that some students believe their scores may not represent their academic potential. Since the early 2000s, colleges across the country have wrestled with whether or not to require ACT or SAT scores as part of a prospective student's application because studies have shown the methodology behind the test is flawed, negatively impacting certain groups of people. Well, everything I've read on that, um, when you look at when you look at uh, academic performance, girls outperform boys in math, for instance, but when it comes to standardized tests, for whatever reason, and they can't figure it out, that trend gets reversed. Despite the flaws in standardized tests, Steve thinks they'll always serve a purpose. If not in admissions, they could be used to determine merit-based scholarships. These are a way to sort of understand where students' skills are. So I think there is some value to that, and not just because my livelihood comes from, uh, <laughs> from these tests. And taking the ACT and SAT can also be a financial burden on students and their parents. Each test costs about $50 to take. Other schools that have made test scores optionals have seen increases in first-generation, low-income, rural, and veteran students. Two Marion County school districts will be asking for more taxpayer dollars on the May ballot. Today, the election board reviewed a referendum proposals from Washington Township and Beach Grove schools. An operating referendum and construction referendum will go before voters in both districts to pay for things like building improvements and teacher raises. The Beach Grove superintendent shared this message for the community. Beach Grove has always come out and supported our, our kids and our community. Uh, the tax impact is, is less than you know $11 per month uh, for the average taxpayer. And uh, we just, you know, they've supported in the past. We hope they come out. And the key thing, if they have questions, call me. I'll meet with them individually and, and try to make sure that we're very transparent and they know what's actually taking place. The Marion County Election Board meets again yeah. next month. Please reveal the book. <laughs> RTV6 makes reading fun. Today, students at Urban Act Academy on the Near East Side picked out books to take home free of charge. The giveaway is part of a literacy initiative through RTV6's parent company, Scripps Media. Members of the RTV6 team had fun helping the kids pick out books. Paw Patrol and Aladdin and Baby Shark. And why do you like those books? Because Baby Shark is a song and I really like it. <laughs> All right, sing it, Amanda. Uh...
<laughs> no, that's all Kevin. That's Kevin's <laughs> favorite shark. song. We Maybe the book sings right, and you open it right. up. Oh, man. But you can see a whole world is open to these kids yeah. mm -hmm. when you flip through the pages. Loved hearing them scream when the big reveal happened. Yeah. They get so excited about picking up their books. And it was really fun because we got the opportunity to read with the kids today with some of their new books. And it was cute because some of the kids are too young to be able to read, but they had stories right when they opened right, up yeah, that I book. Bet. So yes. just you could see their imagination going. Almost 2,000 books there for the choosing. Okay, let's open this book and talk about our range. Periods of rain has not been heavy, will not be heavy as we go through the overnight hours, but I think we'll still have showers around through the day tomorrow. Not an all-out rain, though. Periods of rain. Colder air catches some of the moisture. That means a change to some snow for your Saturday. Above average temperatures are going to continue as we get to next week. Average high is 35. Temperatures will be back at times into the low 40s next week. During the day tomorrow, temperatures low 40s. We're cooler over the weekend, allowing for some of that Saturday snow. It is the next two days that will be the most active in the forecast, first with the rain and then some light snow, but we're dry Sunday and Monday. Temperatures during the day tomorrow right at 40 degrees are a little warmer. I think the dry hours will help temperatures manage their way into the lower 40s and stay above average. Seven o'clock in the morning, scattered showers. We put this in motion. I think the best chance for any moderate rain or a little bit heavier and more consistent rain will be in the eastern portion of the state. Colder air begins to return tomorrow night. We'll talk about what that does for Saturday here in a second. You begin to see a few of the snow showers late tomorrow night. As far as additional rainfall, quarter of an inch or less for most of central Indiana. Maybe a half inch as you start to get into the eastern portion of the state along the state line with Ohio. 35 Saturday, 37 on Sunday. Sunday's dry. Saturday, likely some light snow, but with temperatures above freezing, I think a lot of this is melting on contact and you can see an inch or less of accumulation in most spots through the day Saturday, 7 a.m., Cloudy skies as we go to the early afternoon. There's a little slug of snow moving to the east southeast, covering much of central Indiana. Sticks around a bit on the evening hours. Temperatures, as I show you, in the mid 30s through the afternoon hours, and that will help keep the streets mainly wet. As far as going uh, Saturday through the day, there's that snow shower activity. Sunday, we're dry. Seven day forecast early next week. Temperatures back in the low 40s Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday as well with the chance of rain, which may mix with some snow as well. All eyes on Bloomington tonight for some reason, Brad. Kevin, indeed. Thanks and good evening, everyone. Indiana's not yet halfway through the Big Ten schedule. We have already seen the Hoosiers play very well against very good teams, but IU has also had some downright terrible games already as well. So which would it be tonight against the conference leaders? The Assembly Hall was rocking early. Michigan State in town. Victor Oladipo sitting courtside. Hoosiers had a great opening 10 minutes. Devontae Green on the drive. IU had an 18-4 lead eight minutes into this one. They would go up 15, but it was only four as the half ended. But Al Durham's three at the buzzer made it 37-30. Indiana leading at the break. In the second, the Spartans, probably as expected, would come all the way back. Aaron Henry drives the lane. Another Indy connection. The Ben Davis grad scored 12 points. MSU on top. Hoosiers would come back to lead again. Joey Brunk had maybe his best game of the season. 14 points. Rob Finnessy finds him underneath here. IU up with a minute to go. Two points up. Closing seconds. Cassius Winston drives. Blocked by Trace Jackson Davis. The rebound nearly rolled in. But IU grabs it. Free throws close it out. Another huge home win for the Hoosiers. This time over the preseason number one team. Our Dave first in Bloomington tonight. An exciting one at the Hall. He joins us now with Post Game Reaction Live. Good evening, Dave. Clearly home is where the winds are if you're the Indiana Hoosiers or heck, uh, anyone in the Big Ten this year, right? So here they come in with this thing, jumped out to that 15-point lead. Then you saw Michigan State assert themselves as uh, probably the conference favorite to win the championship, maybe even the conference tournament when it's all said and done uh, at Bankers Eye Fieldhouse in March. A couple big runs for Michigan State, but I thought the series that really told the tale of this game was the loose ball after the missed shot down on the other end of the floor, and Joey Brown as he stepped up many times throughout this game, came up with his sixth rebound of the game, knocked it back out. Al Durham hits the three, puts him up three at that point, and really puts Michigan State away. This is a big-time win in front of a raucous Assembly uh, Hall crowd. 
Coach emphasizes if we can stick out to the Tim Wars, we can be in the game. So I feel like we just learned from last year's experiences, those L's. I feel like we took those, we saved them, and we, you know, learned from them. And now I feel like they're coming to the light, basically. We just played as hard as we could. In all honesty, um, we're going to give it our all every night. And um, we were just playing as hard as we can, so basically... And that's all we can say. We have great fans here at Indiana, and they were they were out early today, and um, they, you know they were they were rocking from the jump, and um, we love playing love playing in front of them, and um, you know it's a it's a great place to great place to play basketball. How about the kid from Southport, the former Butler star, Joey Bronk, now wearing cream and crimson, but let's face it, uh, he is blue collar the whole way. Played hard in this game, as he's done uh, for the most part in this entire season so far. Maybe he's still got a year left next year as well, but Joey Bronk leading the way. Still got to work on the free throw shooting down here, guys. Uh, how about 11 of 20? We're talking about Indiana. We're talking about the, the school that Steve Alford once owned when he went to the free throw line. Uh, this free throw shooting still needs a lot of work. Needs some work in a hurry too. They got Maryland. Again, another top 10 team coming in this weekend. In fact, that's Sunday afternoon here at the Hall. For now, Dave First reporting live, RTV6 Sports. Dave, thanks. We'll look forward to that one on Sunday. Let's continue the Boys City Tournament quarterfinals tonight. Top seed Addicts taking on Cardinal Ritter. The Raiders getting the lead in the opening quarter. Zion Williams to Damon Ogletree underneath. One possession game most of the first half. Christopher Chin knocks one down for Addicts. They were able to keep it rolling. Sincere McMahon drives the baseline and scores. Tigers get the win tonight, 67-6. 60 as they're on to the semifinals. Addicts will face Covenant Christian next. 102 to 90 against Tech in a wild one tonight. Cathedral and Chittard advance in the other half of the bracket. The semifinals are Saturday at Tech. The championship game will be there on Monday night. Finally today, past meets present in Speedway. Mario Andretti on hand for the grand reopening of the Firestone Store and Service Center. It's on Crawfordsville Road. Mario and his brother Aldo actually own this location for more than a decade, starting back in 1969. Also, Firestone making a $10,000 donation to the Boys and Girls Club as well. Good stuff there. Time for another break. Back with more of the news at 11 next. Ask for just $169 a month. China is expanding lockdowns to additional cities in the country in an attempt to contain the spread of the coronavirus. More than 20 million people are impacted by the restrictions. Here in the U.S., there is still only one confirmed case of the disease. Health officials are monitoring two new possible cases. A man who landed at LAX from Mexico with symptoms is now being tested. And a student at Texas A&M is self-quarantined in his home after getting sick. His illness comes after a visit to Wuhan, China, the center of the outbreak. We coordinated with state health agencies as well as the Emergency Operations Center uh, at the CDC. Uh, we followed uh, best recommendations and guidelines uh, to date. Uh, samples were obtained. Uh, fortunately, the patient had mild symptoms and was improving. Chinese officials say the virus has killed at least 25 people and sickened more than 800 others. The World Health Organization says it is too soon to declare a public health emergency. Let's give you a live look at I-65 in Keystone from our Indod traffic camera there. You're watching RTV6 News at 11, and we'll be right back. Book at AspenDental.com or call today. Some light showers overnight, but those folks that are driving back toward Indy from Bloomington, they aren't going to mind, right, after that big IU victory. <laughs> <laughs> Temperatures tomorrow, lower 40s, periods of rain. Not an all-day rain, then some Saturday snow. What do you know, January and a little snow? Oh, you live all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us for RTV 6 News at 11. It's been great having you along. Good night.